Mina, Gone Bon Wad, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Back with some more Joe. We are at chapter 28, so we're a little, what? We're close to, maybe not close to the end, but we're getting, out of 42 chapters, we're over the halfway point, so we are getting there. Again, I'm still thoroughly enjoying this book. I am a huge fanboy of the book of Job at this point. It's, because, it's like in my top three favorite books of the Bible now. We're going to start with verse 1 of chapter 28. This is Job talking. He is talking about a very specific subject, which we will close in on by the end of this message. Surely there is a mine for silver and a place where gold is refined. Iron is taken from the earth and copper is smelted from ore. Man puts an end to darkness and searches every recess for ore in the darkness and the shadow of death. He breaks open a shaft away from people in places forgotten by feet. They hang far away from men. They swing to and fro. He goes on about that for a while, about man's ability to search things out and to find things. Then skip down to verse 12, but where can wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man does not know its value, nor is it found in the land of the living. The deep says it is not in me, and the sea says it is not with me. It cannot be purchased for gold, nor can silver be weighed for its price. And it goes on a little bit more about that. You know, obviously values, uh, wisdom, and I would certainly include knowledge, love, joy, peace, happiness, all of those things cannot be found by simply digging them up in the ground. Obviously, they don't exist there. You won't find those things there. Where do you find these intangibles? They're, and I was like, even the hardest materialist who says the, the world just exists the way it is, it's all a matter of, you know, electrical impulses in your brain. It's a matter of chemical compounds flowing throughout your body. Those guys have good days and bad days. They fall in love and get married. They have things they enjoy. They have things they don't like. They have opinions on what is right and what is wrong in the world, on what is smart and what is foolish. We can't get away from those things as humans. Those things are there, and opinions vary. So even if you say it's all just natural and all just a part of the machine, we can't deny the existence of such things. And the Bible suggests that it isn't just a chemical compound. It isn't just something found within the core of our, be of our physical body, not our, the core of our being. Because I believe the core of the man is much more than just a brain which um, has a bunch of neurons I don't know if, even know if I'm using the right word, but it's a bunch of neurons just pulsating back and forth in a heart that pumps blood until you get old and it just at some point stops. Man, The core of man is much more than that. Let's jump down to verse 20. From where then does wisdom come and where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all living and concealed from the birds of the air. Destruction and death say, we have heard a report about it with our ears. God understands its way. And he knows its place, for he looks to the ends of the earth and sees under the whole heavens to establish a weight for the wind and apportion the waters by measure. Talk about a wise guy. Now, I don't mean that. that. That sounded kind of funny. Did not mean that um, sarcastically. That was an unintentional is pun. The right word there. I'm not sure pun's the right word there. But that the way that sounded was very unintentional. He's the literal definition of a wise guy. When he made a law for the rain and a path for the thunderbolt, a path for a lightning streak. That's, that's cool. That's impressive to me. Then he saw wisdom and declared it. He prepared it indeed. He searched it out. And to man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. And the Bible's rep reputed wisest man of all time, Solomon, wrote in the book of Proverbs, I want to say chapter 3, that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom right there. And some people say that Job was probably written before Solomon, possibly way before Solomon, that he might have lived in the days of Abraham, somewhere in that vicinity. So it's very possible that the wisest man of all time looked to Job, the man who has suffered pretty much one of the worst fates of all men. And he said, you know what? That guy hit it dead on. He was absolutely right. This is where wisdom comes from. 
So that thing that can't be found, that thing that can't be dug up, that thing that is way more than just a bunch of chemicals and electrical impulses flowing through our bodies, that's found in fearing the Lord and obeying Him. That's where wisdom, that's where understanding comes from. If you want, if you want to wisen up, if you want to gain some knowledge and understanding, start fearing the Lord. Start obeying His commandments. It'll lead you down some really, really good paths. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you. God bless.